You're listening to Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits Podcast. While you are on a boat that's taking on water in the middle like of the ocean. Mm, I don't like that. Not that's good. But then all of a sudden you hear this. <laughs> the Disney cruise ship has stopped to rescue you. They did that yesterday. Uh, for- Keep going! <laughs> Keep, leave me! Oh, no. Can you call another one? <laughs> God. Here's the story of what happened from ABC News. Four sailors waking up lucky to be alive. They were doing everything they can, um, but they knew that uh, they were in dire situations. The U.S. Coast Guard receiving a call for help around 8.30 Sunday morning that a 50-foot catamaran was sinking. It was the, um, a married couple, their daughter, and, and a cousin So the oldest being 74 and the youngest being 25. The boat, known as the Serenity, proving to be anything but. It was located 230 nautical miles off the coast of Bermuda. A gasket failure in the escape hatch disabling the boat, eventually taking on water. They were prepared with their life-saving equipment. Um, They they had a, a float plan. If it weren't for that preparation, then... They would, they would likely still be out there wondering if help would ever arrive. Just roughly 80 nautical miles away, the Disney treasure making its way to its new home in Port Canaveral as the newest ship in the Disney Cruise Line fleet, which is set to make its debut voyage next month. Once the cruise ship was within radio contact, they worked directly with the sailing vessel, and they're super helpful, super willing to do whatever they could to help these people. The crew launching one of their lifeboats, bringing all four passengers on board with no injuries reported. Damn. The captain of the Disney Treasure saying in a statement, We are pleased that the Disney Treasure was able to provide aid to the boat passengers in peril. Our crew members worked together on the rescue, skillfully demonstrating their training and commitment to safety. And we're told that the time between the distress call and the rescue was just over an hour. So all of it happening very, very quickly. And again, nobody was hurt. But it's just incredible. They were very lucky that this ship was there because, again, that ship was brand new. So it had all of the resources to help those passengers. Well, shouldn't every ship have that? No. Yeah, you would think. But maybe there are some that don't. Who is this grandpa that's like, we're headed to the Bermuda Triangle? <laughs> he literally was Get headed that boat. way. What is he doing? <laughs> Just the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. A little fishing trip. Let's go. Yeah. Everything will be great. It's a sailboat. <laughs> small one. Let's go. <laughs> Hop on grandpa's Tiny little around. boat. <laughs> Nothing will go wrong in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> what is he doing? What are we doing out there, guys? That's, I think that's in it, right? Like, yeah, yeah it that's is. It yeah, is. that is. <laughs> I think it is right where everyone disappears. Let's yep. go. <laughs> Lots of planes have just vanished out of the sky here. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happens to your boat? That's it. It just, uh, just like, uh, let it sink. Yeah, in. it's done. It's it done. Sink. Yeah. No, Insurance that. cover that? I would hope so. I would think. I can't your imagine. Boat, boat was sinking. Boat insurance. What it's like dealing with those people? Oh man. Oh lord. Oh Bermuda mm-hmm. Triangle. Oh god. Did. You didn't think about that, did you? Mm-hmm. Look at this. It. That's yeah. not in our coverage area. Yeah, it's right there. Atlantis no, Ber- and the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> go to those you Can't go to either one. Tried to find Atlantis, huh? <laughs> that was a bad mm. call. Bad call. Well, this story sounded real nice, but it takes a turn. A woman dove into the Detroit River to save a dog, a stranger's dog, mm. but she ends up in handcuffs. Why? Because she was wasted. Oh wow! Well. Well, well. well, here's the story from Fox Two. The Wyandotte woman dove into the chilly waters, no questions asked. And it wasn't even her dog. But this hero story takes a turn. We're trying to save a dog, you guys, son. Okay, Public intoxication. Oh, boy. It was pretty obvious that she was highly intoxicated. Yeah, Blowing double digits need. at 11 a.m. last Friday. The Wyandotte wow. woman doesn't think <laughs> twice before jumping in after a stranger's <laughs> pup, doggy <laughs> paddling for dear life. You're not jumping into a swimming pool here. I mean, this is some real danger. A little late liquid courage and a big heart. She did a good thing. Now she risked her own personal safety 
she likely saved that dog's life. The dog belonged to an elderly woman who says the groomer didn't put its harness on tight enough. He slipped out and right into the Detroit River in Bishop Park in Wyandotte. So this elderly female, and this happens, is frantic. That's her That's her baby. And she starts screaming Well, this woman comes out of nowhere, jumps in the river to save the dog. Floating on her back with the pup on her chest until <laughs> firefighters got there. The dog made it back on shore, then the woman. I got it. Once they get the woman out, they, just for the basic police report, they ask for her name for some identification. She refuses to give her name. Uh Uh-oh, probably because she has warrants. Nothing too serious misdemeanors. Misdemeanors. Then Chief Archie Hamilton says she gets big mad from here. She actually claimed that the dog's owner, the elderly female, maliciously threw the dog in the water and kicked the dog. We could not corroborate this at all. Even the deputy chief showed up to try and convince the woman to just take a ride home from officers. They wanted to go ahead and give her a break. They wanted to just drive her home. Finally, chief says they had no choice but to take her in on public intoxication charges. You guys take me, do whatever you want. A good deed gone awry. At least the dog will be okay. And this latest charge is just a misdemeanor. I would guess she probably needs help. And hopefully this will propel her to get the help she truly needs. A woman who claims to have saved that dog reached out to us on social media. She said it obviously was a very scary situation, but she would do it a million times over. Jessica Dupnak on The Edge. I'm mad at her. Whatever. No, it's nice. She's I mean, 11 a.m. wasted, though. Uh, that's, well, yeah, that's, she's that's got life. issues. Hopefully yeah, she life. can help, get help or whatever, like they said. But Sounds like really they were going nice. to let her go. Like, yeah, they tried. She was just so too- do you think she made up that story about the owner yes. kicking it in there, but just to like divert attention right. I think away so. from her? Another yeah. Selling the old lady down yeah. the river, literally? Yeah. Yeah. But then you, I mean, as the old lady, it's like, you can't be right. horribly mad because Thank she saved your dog. dog. <laughs> yeah. so, that well, alcoholic so monster woman that <laughs> <laughs> saved the dog. <laughs> Good get her. She kicked in the dog. She threw it in. You're my drunken hero. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to jail now. Yeah, she yeah. is. Go sleep it off. It's it's just crazy because they're just like, oh, like what's your name? And she's like, I'm never telling anybody my name. <laughs> oh, that's nah, not gonna yeah, get you. Because she far, knew she yeah. had warrants, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it's not, not gonna it. get you far. Well, as we move on to Celebrity Dirt, a big shocker in the celebrity world yesterday when Megan Fox announced she's expecting a little bundle of joy with Machine Gun Kelly. Can you even imagine it? (laughs) The 38-year-old revealed that she is pregnant with her fourth child with a slick Instagram post appearing naked and covered in what appears to be black oil as she cradles her baby bump in the first of two photos. She said, nothing is ever really lost. Welcome back. She tagged her on-again, off-again fiancé, Machine Gun Kelly, in the post. They got engaged in January of 2022, but called things off two months later. So did they make a mistake here? Is this a mistake? Is this an oopsie baby, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hopefully they didn't plan it. Oh, man. I got um, such issues with Machine Gun Kelly because that was like he's the first person that made me realize like I'm I'm getting old. Oh yeah, like, I don't understand him. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't understand like why. Like, a, like a, he's like a rapper that is tattooed and wears ladies' pants suits. And- <laughs> Like yeah. I, was, I was like, I don't get it. I was like, I don't understand. They call him Machine Gun Kelly, and he's yep. a, he's dressed like a female attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is confusing. It, it is. I haven't it heard is. much about him lately. I so. interviewed him, and he's a weird dude. Like, weird real? how? Uh, yeah, kind of like what Andy said. Like I kind of asked him about the outfits, and he just kept saying, "I'm a rock star." No, oh god. So Andy, tell me about the tour, <laughs> rock star. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. He was very into himself, but then he he also just really likes gobstoppers. Is my big takeaway. Wow, that's okay. you he want more to, out of he that. Likes to suck on things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's unclear if they are back together officially or not. Uh, no so. comments were allowed on the post. Her pregnancy announcement marks her return to Instagram. She wiped her account back in May, and she unfollowed all the accounts she previously followed. She still has 21 and a half million followers, though, but she does does not follow anyone on Instagram anymore. She does have three kids with her ex-husband, 
90210 star Brian Austin Green. Machine Gun Kelly, he's also already a dad. He's a father to his 15-year-old daughter, Cassie, that he shares with his former girlfriend, Emma. Holy crap, I just thought about having a 15-year-old and being dressed like that. <laughs> like if you, Chuck, oh were my Machine God. Gun Chuck, and uh, Stella was your daughter. Like, uh, it actually now warms my heart that he has a 15-year-old daughter because she is letting him have it every day. Every day. I'm sure. She's like, you look like a tool. Like, <laughs> there's no question in my mind that his daughter is like, you look so dumb. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. He needs that. I hope he has that. Fox and Machine Gun Kelly began dating in 2020 after they met on the set of the movie Midnight in the Switchgrass, in which Megan Fox plays an FBI agent to Machine Gun Kelly's low-level pimp. How have we never ooh, seen ooh. this? Oh, uh, just, how how have know. we never seen that movie? It's not on our radar. Or heard oh. anything about it before. I don't know how I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's an FBI agent. He's a pimp. Believable. <laughs> Look right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yikes. I mean, I just, honestly, though, she clearly makes some bad choices in life. but um, Clearly. She could have made so many other better choices. Oh, absolutely. Because I do think, like, he wins. She's a disaster. Well, she's a mess, but still, <laughs> I just still think a gorgeous disaster. She is a gorgeous disaster. Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah, absolutely. There's no denying that. And he's one of these rat men. Rat? Yeah, men? rat. Oh. He looks kind of like a rat. Oh, a little I see bit. What you're Skinny, tall, ratty. Just they always sorry. do well. They always do well. <laughs> Look at that guy. I know. It's so weird. Look at the it. daughter, how upset the daughter is to even, oh, like, that's my God, dad. I just want to see you dressed like that with Stella by oh your side. Oh, my God. Now, there's no way. She would hate you so much. There's no way. She'd be so embarrassed by you. Like, this outfit? Like, oh, what my is God. That? I don't know. I don't even know where you get something like that. Where do I get a completely sequined <laughs> What about these? Suit? I don't know. Cheetah print pants. <laughs> the, the lady the section peekaboo somewhere. Top. What about your peekaboo top? Oh, wow. Yeah, he dresses like the crow's bisexual cousin. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, crow. (laughs) Hey, the crow. (laughs) That's your cousin? Why'd you bring that guy here? He's a bisexual cousin. I'm being forced to hang out with him. Ah, goodness. Rate Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Subscribe now to Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Man, Florida's effed up. This seems like the kind of thing that would happen at a dysfunctional family gathering in Florida. A 20-year-old guy in Miami named Alexander Rodriguez was arrested the other day after he stabbed his brother in the neck. Oh. Yeah. Yep. There you go, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they lived together. Yep. And were cooking in the kitchen that night until they had some sort of argument. Unclear what they were making, but Alexander definitely had a knife. And he turned and stabbed his brother in the neck and sliced his arm and face as well. Ooh, face. Have a couple yep. of those, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, these kind of stories always scare me because it's it's always like two two bros living together at the That's end. It. Like, <laughs> I just don't want that. Don't <laughs> want that. That's <laughs> why you do it. Yeah. Andy, do just what you keep can. Trying. Gotta keep yeah. trying. Yeah. Do what you can. Yeah. Yeah. You can do this, bro. That. <laughs> you can live on your own. When the cops showed up, they rushed the brother to the hospital. Sounds like he's going to be okay. They did find Alexander, this guy here, hiding in a tree. Mm -hmm. And they asked him what happened. He said he was upset because his brother was talking over the food. Yeah, you got to hear the bubbles and stuff. Oh, you don't think he maybe is like a spit talker? Oh, Oh, and there was like... And and he's like... Spittle? Tarnation, oh, spittle. That's tarnation. What, you that's know, what he's you saying say? lots of words. Yeah, spittle. Suffering flesh. You know, Ooh. I mean, yeah. you can't. That's gross. Mm-hmm. Oh, spittle in my food is gross for sure. It's yeah. the worst word. Like, I remember being spittle. at a. Yeah. I was at like a birthday <laughs> celebration one time, and the person that blew the candles 
out was a spit blower. Oh. Mm. And I was like, no one eat that cake. Please, God, no. And they still doled it out. They oh. doled it out to everybody. Yeah, I can't do that. That's gross. So sometimes, I mean, I do think stabbing someone in the neck for that is extreme. He must have been injured, too, I guess, judging from his crazy mug shot. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know if he went quietly out of that tree. They probably had to oh, yeah, get him down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a little tase out of that tree. That's a different Alex Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, not the not, yeah, <laughs> not the yeah. baseball player. No, no, no. no, no. A different one. A yeah. 20-year-old crazy man yeah. from Miami. Less uh, successful. Yes, Alex yes. Rodriguez. absolutely. Yeah. You can go check out his mugshot for yourself at DaveAndChuckTheFreak.com or there's links through our social media pages as well. You can check it there. But yes, I'm not sure what talking over the food mm-hmm. really means. I bet you're right. It's the spit. But it's probably spit, spittle. man. Spittle, spittle, spittle. Mm-hmm. You realize. wouldn't want anyone to like go over your plate of food and just start no. talking over top no, of it. No, 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 no. And no. you're right. Like I do watch people blow out candles. <laughs> My little nephew had a problem. I worked with him on it through the years. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, buddy, we got it. We don't spit stuff at it. We just blow at it. This was an old person. Oh, oh my yeah. god. It is like it. It occurs to you later in life than it should. Probably how gross blowing out candles is. Uh-huh. Yeah. The one thing about COVID. <laughs> It changed that for a while. People yeah. were just like blowing oh, one it. candle out and then oh. slicing the cake up. No, we're yeah. doing it again. I, I know, say. it's right. It came rushing back. I don't yeah. think about it, really. I've never seen anyone spit on in the, you know. I, I had never of, thought about it. Uh, I had never until, thought until about it until it. when I saw it and I was like, oh yeah. God. Yeah. And then it all, the memories, like, yeah, started. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 The hundreds of pieces of spittle yeah. cake you've eaten. <laughs> like a Rolodex spinning. It was cake. exactly the same. When I saw my little nephew, I'm like, how many people have actually spit on cakes? Yeah. And, and like people, attention. you know, and I don't, you know, birthday celebrations, especially for someone who's older. And it's like, OK, we don't know how many more of these. Have, have you some cake? Mm. Have it. No, it's her cake. It's you right. got to. Yep. Mm. Well, yeah, there's a lot of cake pressure you being put on it people. Big cake pressure. So you just eat. You do. You just like this grandma's show is ruining me. Spit. I, I don't. I don't want to be the freak at the birthday party. I, know, Lisa, I don't. I wish I never saw it. I don't want to be that no, person. I know. I wish I, know, I never Lisa. saw it. I want to be like here. Here's a little special cupcake that you can blow out, and the rest of us will eat this. That's so cake. smart. No, but That's we're not so doing. Smart. I'm not being that person. No, elderly no. and he's going to be such a mess they're going to be like what's well, so sad he's having a bad day he put his toothbrush away because he said there's poop particles in there <laughs> oh yeah true it's all you'll yeah. remember yeah. yeah all the horrible things we learned on the show yeah. poop particles <laughs> oh, he woke up it's everywhere spittle and poop <sighs> spittle yep. and poop <laughs> i'm telling you man the lighting was you know they turn the lights off right yeah, yeah. and so the lighting was off just enough that you you saw like the a cloud of mist. Oh no! Oh no! That's, like a misty. I've never uh, seen that. Oh man! I think it changes terrible. things once you see. Oh, it. I I couldn't. This guy said my grandma actually spit her teeth out on the cake. See, well and then everyone, it's her cake. Everyone's yeah. Yeah. It oh, everybody. No, see, no, no. I told you, everyone's that's, got the pressure. No, it's her cake now. The pressure. I'll take the piece around the teeth. Mm. I always go furthest away from the candle. It's not bad. It's not a bad idea. You have to really pay attention to how it's being presented. Yeah. Tough times. So many people too. They want to look at it first, and I always wonder how many times have they lifted that box up? Like, oh, looks great. Yep. Yeah. Talk over that cup. Oh, right looks over. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that was a special kick. I hate to. Yeah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but <laughs> when you saw, you know, every once in a while they'll show you. Like, remember when COVID hit, and they'd be like, "This is what happens when the human person sneezes." Yeah. yeah. Well, if you see someone just talking and realize how much spit comes out of our mouth when I you realize talk. it in here sometimes. Yeah. Like the oh, light yeah, of it. I'm like, I'll be getting animated about it. I'm like, man, I'm I'm a disgusting yeah. animal. <laughs> Good news is they now sell a protective cake cover. Well that won't be weird. <laughs> Oh, so you, you put really the candles like through the it. Put the candles through it, and it protects the top oh, of the that's, cake. That's one. That's you so know, smart. It is smart, but you know what's gross is that you're going to see this, and then it's going to be covered in spit. Yeah, yeah. And but then, then you're you going to know oh, how much spit you've actually consumed in yeah. your life. 
Yep. Yeah, but you are the crazy person. You when are. They, I know. You're the cake oh, out, then you're like, hold on real quick. Let me place a cake cover on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll all survive some you spit. Mind. It'll be okay. Just don't think about it. You're not going to die. It's going to be okay. I mean, that's not always true, but yes. <laughs> it's, uh, majority it actually of is pretty much true. Yeah. yeah. Have you know anyone that's kill. died from a slice of birthday cake? I mean, no, not yet. No. It's going to be okay. Spit has taken people down. But. Or they make suction cup candles you can put right on top of the package. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, before I mean, you, that's not cool. That's going to burn someone to death, right? <laughs> we'll really plastic, well, that right? That's going to burn someone yeah. right to death. <laughs> Third degree burns. Yep. Like I said, I mean, normally you're just like, whatever. You just eat the cake. It's not a big deal. Stay but germ free tough. and carefree. It is tough when you see it fly out. It is. For sure it is. When you get older, your lips don't work as well. No. And they fail you, especially in a blowing People motion. lick beeholes. Yes, right? so and they're sometimes not that person just licked one. <laughs> and is blowing and out a candle. now it's their birthday. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bill, get down here and blow out your candle. Yeah, I'll be down in one <laughs> second. Not washing my face or anything, but I just had a great time. <laughs> oh. Oh, is man. it out? No, I can't get oh. that last one. Uh-oh. Oh. Okay. What? Ooh, that oh. smells mm. a bit. Mm. Mm. I hate when the candle doesn't blow out. Oh, yeah, they, they, they really do. work on it. Sometimes they reignite real, real bad. For Maybe sure. get grandma just a little tiny cake. Right, of her I own love that special idea. cake. Listen, this I is your special idea. cake, and then this is for all the other losers that came uh-huh. to your party. Yep, I love that idea, Lise. Sorry, like, we oh. don't mean to ruin cake for anyone. We really don't, but it's just, just facts. Yeah, old people got a lot of spittle. They do. They do. When I think about spittle, I think about my grandpa <laughs> and then eating corn on the cob, and oh. there'd just be some spittle like, shining in the light on his yep. lip. Oh yeah. That's half of my my duties with my dad. I'm like, Dad. Yeah. Got a little. Remove your spittle. <laughs> got a little. Uh, mm. I don't know what that is. I think it's popcorn. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. We have heard of uh, incidents at hairdressers and barbershops through the years. Generally, it's because it turned out so bad, right? Someone's haircut went wrong and yeah. they like rage up. Sure. This, though, I guess a guy just decided, you know what? I don't want to pay for this. Oh. oh. And then that turned violent. And including a gun being pulled on the barber in Cleveland. That story now from News 5. At Urban Cuts, they are usually quite busy. Sunday is actually one of our more busier days since other shops are closed. But this Sunday, owner Waverly Willis says things were out of the ordinary. So in 16 years, you've never had anything like this? At at either one of my locations. Have you had people that didn't have the money to pay for their haircut, though? Yes, we have people that, that have not had money for the haircut. It was Sunday afternoon after getting his haircut. A customer didn't have the 40 bucks to pay for it. So he told the barber someone would bring him the money. So the barber said, okay. And after an hour and a half, two hours, naturally, the barber gets a little agitated and said, ask the guy. He confronts him. What's going on? Where's the money at? Surveillance video shows the two arguing with each other. Then things escalated. Out of the blue, oh, no. this gentleman pulls out a nine millimeter pistol. And uh, the the barber, obviously, he, he backs up to the point that he backs out the door. Police say the customer fired a shot inside the shop just before leaving. A wow. uh, bullet goes right there. And this husky, good old husky. Then fired two to three more outside. No one was injured. People keep saying he saved the mirror, but it, it could have. Bounced off. If, it could have right, done so many right. It could have things. bounced off and, and hit Andre again. Andre is literally 12 to 18 inches away from this. He's standing right here. And Waverly says they know the shooter. He's a regular. Of course. We don't know him, know him, but he's he's a regular for the shop. He still can't believe they would do this. To risk lives over a $40 haircut, you know. The math is not mathing on that. But after years of working with the community, Waverly refuses to let it ruin his business. Rest assured, all is well at Urban Cuts Barbershop. And I want to let other business owners know that we have to stick together and we have to let the community know that we are small business owners and this type of behavior cannot and will not be tolerated in our businesses. Anybody with information is asked to contact Cleveland Police. Well, it's crazy. for Husky Toolbox. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really pretty was. strong. Pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, damn. <laughs> Looking for a new toolbox. There you go. Better go well, Husky. Mm-hmm. Not that hopefully I'll get shot at. <laughs> no. Well, no. While holding not. my toolbox. Let's hope not. <laughs> but, yeah, it's good. Good to know. 
Mm-hmm. Holds up. Yeah. Yeah. It's violent out there. It's just crazy because it is, it is just not, it's not, it's not the cheapest cut you can get, but, uh, it's not enough to kill somebody. No, it is just not. randomly fire not bullets enough. into no, a, no, a place. I know last time you were at a thrift stop or a charity store, a thrift shop. Or a charity store. Uh-huh. But um, what did you see in the window? Maybe like an uh, old doll's house, some old books, maybe a mannequin. Lots of weird and wonderful things you can come across. But some things you would not expect, like sex toys. Oh, God. An elderly volunteer at a charity store in the U.K. Oh, no. Accidentally put butt plugs on display in the Sculpt- front window. Beautiful sculptures. Thinking yeah. they she were doorknobs. Oh, doorknobs. She thought they were doorknobs. <laughs> These are gorgeous doorknobs. Artsy. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> there they are on display. That Look poor at lady. got the jewels on the back. Yeah, Jeez. she yeah. handled them. She put stickers on them. That's the unfortunate oh, part. Oh, my. Wow. Yeah, the volunteers... Um, I had come across what are actually a pair of his and hers silver butt plugs. Yeah, it's wonderful to get someone on their wedding. <laughs> <laughs> For the bargain price of uh, two British pounds. And they were there, laid out, they thought would be lovely in the front window next to a ceramic vase and some other items. Because they did not think they were getting noticed in the bin. That one thrift shopper... I love to put stuff in his butt. He would have loved this. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that guy yeah. Are you kidding me? He would have finally found what he was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa, what, the old lady Lisa will know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so true. Sure. So you're going to know. Yeah. You will know. You'll be like, well informed. You'll be like, don't. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. You got, wait, gather around. <laughs> gather around. These are butt plugs. <laughs> I know that from my previous job. <laughs> No, it's not because I have plug experience. Yeah, she will explain it thoroughly. Was on a show on the radio. (laughs) What's that? What's that? He won't know. Right. I'll explain all that. Ancient (laughs) technology. Not used in 50 years. But that's how I know what that is. <laughs> and you need to raise the price because in 50 years, people will be buying butt plugs just from the thrift store. Oh, It'll be no big deal. It'll be yeah, no big yeah. whoop. I just feel bad that that poor old lady had to handle these. Yeah, yeah she, she did. did. You, just, you hope they're clean. I don't think they are, but. She polished them up. She oh. did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know she, she did, like Lisa. <laughs> Maybe oh, with a little no, bit of her spittle. No. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of her spittle. There's a mark here. Yeah. It won't go away. Oh, oh no. no. No, no. I can't get this mark oh. off. There, let me scratch it with my teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's Gross. not great. They are shiny. They really shine they them are. up. They did shine them up. Because you know. Are like military grade metal. Yeah. Those are the good ones. Jewels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See a lot of ladies with those in. <laughs> His and hers. Yep. Uh, so she said, uh, the customer said, I was so shocked. I walked past this window and neatly laid out were a pair of his and hers silver butt plugs. Oh. They were sitting there for all to see, laid out in front of a ceramic vase. <laughs> uh, it wasn't until this streetwise customer walked into the shop and pointed out to the old ladies that they are not doorknobs. <laughs> no screws in them. No. You know, that would have been a tip. Yep. The uh, volunteer in her 70s was mortified what? by what she had handled. <laughs> uh, I put and those in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I shot the diamonds on them. <laughs> <laughs> I licked the diamonds. <laughs> Immediately pulled them from oh, yeah. the window. Yep. You think that they have a different name for them over there? Like bum stoppers? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a bum stopper. No. Uh, it's a bum stuff. Up. Yeah, I bet it's like um, <laughs> like nothing we could even imagine right. what they call them. Uh, they told the old lady it would be a good idea to put rubber gloves on and put them straight in the garbage. In yeah. which she screamed, oh my God. Do you think she left and never came back to that place? Yeah, that's her. yeah she went outside and it's England, so she opened an umbrella and flew away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. She's gone. <laughs> flew right over the River Thames. Uh, if you want to see... <laughs> 
<laughs> what these charity butt yeah. plugs look like, you can go check them out at DaveAndChuckTheFreak.com and through links on our social oh, media man, pages. It was right under a sign that said something about your inner wisdom. Yeah. Yep. Just inner another wisdom, head. that's... Put it with the yeah. rest. Mm-hmm. Lisa, you could fall for this because these charity right. shops help animals from cruelty and neglect. Oh, no. Like she definitely, definitely could be some yeah, place doing volunteering. Yeah, yeah for sure. Something. No, Lisa would be doing but good they need in the people world. like you. But yeah. I'll identify the butt plugs for everyone. Oh, oh well. Guys, that's not a sculpture. That's someone's <laughs> homemade penis. <laughs> Trust me, I was on a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> what they do is they get a homemade kit, put it in there, and it would make that. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> What's this thing here that looks like a belt? It's a cage. I don't no. know what. Uh, chastity belt. What? Uh, what is that Chastity for? belt. <laughs> well, I wasn't into this. <laughs> Let me clarify. Yeah. But apparently you'd want to lock up someone's bits from time to time. <laughs> And that's what running, that is. Running them all there. I'm like, that's a, that's a knob lock. <laughs> knob locker. <laughs> yeah. Knob locker, you call it? We called it a chastity belt. Look at that. Wow. Looks like some kind of athletic supporter. It's not. <laughs> Man's penis is in that. <laughs> but you know. Down. See, there's yep. the positive thing you can do with the, the stuff you've learned on the show. That's a wheelie lock. <laughs> Help others out. I'm getting right out of Figure that. what it is. Download Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Leave a rating for Dave and Chuck the Freak's Tasty Bits podcast on iTunes or Google Play. All right, speaking of weird fetishes like locking up your willy, uh, the a sexual perversion expert has studied this kind of stuff for years and says these are the weirdest fetishes he's ever studied. Okay. Dr. Mark Griffiths is a social psychologist who uh, studies fetishes. In a new article, he revealed the five most shocking sexual obsessions he's ever come across in his research. I bet he doesn't mention the real bad ones. That'd be my guess. Maybe he does. We'll hear. According to him, here's what they are. Okay. Vorophilia. Okay. Don't know it. Like a little bit of cannibalism. Oh, just a little bit? Just a touch. Who? Uh, Army Hammer, Hollywood yeah. actor, was the most high profile example of vorophilia to date, accused by an ex of harboring cannibalism fantasies. There's a lot of, uh, hmm, God. Sometimes you'll see. Uh, like a thing where they're cooking somebody. What? Mm-hmm. Oh, like a fake thing? Like, like a fake a, oh, okay. spigot. Or, a, or they're on a spigot. Yeah. Or they're in a pot. You'll see it. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's out there. And j- on all those same pages that are trying to get you to watch poop stuff, they throw that in there every once in a while. It's like, oh, look, another person on a spigot. Whew. Another person being taken to a fire. Like... What is wrong with us? So people who practice this, they just like slice off a little bit of their skin and fry it up or something? I don't know. That's that, messed up. I Can you call that a fetish? That's Yeah, it's a fetish if they're masturbating to it. It's like a derangement. More. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it normally is fake, you hope. A proctophilia. Don't know. People turned on by flatulence. Yeah, I knew it was something about Oh, well, that's cake farts and the, stuff. The proct. Procto. Oh, procto is... Uh, <laughs> it's butt. I think it's butt. Oh, okay. It means butt. One of the guys <laughs> he studied uh, during his research is a 22-year-old guy from Illinois who recalled his crush on a girl who accidentally farted in school. Man, that's all it takes, huh? You're like, there's that super pretty girl, and then you got too close, and then she farted, and then your whole life is ruined. It's not the reverse. There'd be a lot of horny ladies out oh there. My with their husbands. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! See, that's he's so why it's sexy. not. It's not. So We'd, everyone sexy. wouldn't be able to stop nope. banging because I'm one of the hottest guys you've ever seen. If that takes off, <laughs> <laughs> I am so attractive back there. <laughs> oh my god! If women were turned <laughs> on ladies, by male hearts, yeah. whoa, <laughs> ladies, back up! Holy smokes! I'm the population would be out of control. Yep. We'd just be banging all the time. Uh, so this 22-year-old said, it blew my mind. 
I knew by simple biology that girls farted, but actually hearing a girl fart, a girl that I had a crush on, that she was capable of such a thing, sparked a real strange interest in me, and that's where it all began. That's it. His attraction to farts, though, wasn't limited to women. Oh, no, because it's just the farts. Right. Doesn't care. After he and a friend agreed to settle regular bets by allowing the winner to fart in the loser's face, he would intentionally lose the bets. Of course he would. So oh. his friend would fart upon him. The hell of a way to live. That's terrible, man. <laughs> That's terrible. The hell of a way to live. But you listen. Just you knowing know, that you listen. were the farter, though, that your farts were... Tur- you were like, hey, hey, yeah, wait for it. Yeah, but at the same time, so if you're involved in fantasy football or whatever, and you... Whatever. And then one of your buddies is like, guys, I got a great idea for the loser. <laughs> you pull your pants right off. You put your butt right in their face and you fart on them. That guy's into that. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's into that. I'll question him. I always feel like the person that would suggest that kind of thing has something going on. Like the person that suggests the bet stuff. Oh, know? yeah. <laughs> Big time. Pay attention. Yeah, you should. Pay attention. Absolutely. Man, watch out for fart, man. Yeah. Uh, another one of the strangest fetishes this expert says they have heard of. Hmm. Apotomnophilia. Apotomnophilia. This is both real and imagined amputation. Okay, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, well, we know that. Luckily, some only need to fantasize about it, about being amputated or engaging in sex with someone who is. A few, though, have gone so far as to attempt to trick surgeons into cutting off a limb or they were people were like going to people to have them do it but yeah. they're not really this is the weird part i guess they're not turned on by that they're not turned on by the pain it's of the stump that remains stump grinder yeah. right See, that stump, stump grinder. really gets them going yep. one of the most shocking things i've ever seen yep it's crazy. Wait, <laughs> man, we did a whole stump grinder investigation on the show yeah once. we did yep, yep. Got deep. You tell those people about I that. I can too. tell them all about yeah. it. You know what yeah. that was? <laughs> Stump grinder. I remember. Huh? Hmm. Uh, I wish I didn't remember. <laughs> it's not true. Either. Yeah, I can see that. Whenever. Oh I'm man, it's just I'm a, in my mind that video. Oh, I'm like, ah, yep. oh, there it is. This guy says <laughs> he admits he's got a proctophilia. Sorry, he says my fiance. Luckily, I found her. She will fart in my face and mouth whenever I want. See, I, I talked about that video I saw, the guy with the gas mask. Yeah. And he had a hose and right to she it, was uh, just farting right in his face. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's insane. Because the other guy sounds like it's the sound. Yeah. And then you just get him, a, like, a, a balloon and you can rub your finger on it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well. But strap him up. That's right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Dave. They'll put you down. Yeah, Time Dave. to put you down, sir. Dave has, a like, a... Something's gone real wrong with you. Right. A real, a true ending <laughs> for your fetish. Nighty night. Yeah. Um, dacrophilia. Dacrophiliacs are turned on by tears. So this guy, this specialist has found three subtypes of people. By the way, if anyone listening has ever been into any of this stuff, or if you've come across someone, encountered someone who is, feel free to reach out. one 954 6969 one eight five four, no one eight five five nine five four six nine six nine. He's giving out his home phone number. No, it was not. That is not my home phone. Call number. Dave at home. Do not call me at home. Call Dave at home. We have trouble solving yeah, that. Wow. Yeah, it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Start giving out my home number. Nothing Don't lasts forever. Five 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 yeah. one four seven four. That's your home phone number. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, this sexual perversion expert is revealing the weirdest fetishes he's ever studied. If you've ever encountered anything like it, 1-855-954-6969 or text us at 46969. So these people that are turned on by tears, there's three subtypes of them that fetishize crying. Compassionate types that are aroused by empathy. Dominant submissive types may induce or experience crying during some power play and curled lip types they're specifically turned on by the subject's quivering lower lip 
Man. As they're crying. Jeez. I've always said it. I have a soft spot for, like, crying woman. I can't handle it emotionally when a woman cries. I have a soft spot. But it's not a, like, you get hard spot. No, I'll fall right in love with them, though. I'll just do whatever they want to make them stop crying. Yeah, I don't, yeah. (laughs) Like, whatever. Well, I'll go get Rob. I'll drive... Five hours Night in shining you armor. Like, well, yeah. What do you need? Most Night in shining armor. Empathetic people do, you know, especially I don't have that. your lady. You I don't, don't have, have that. Empathy. I don't mm. have that. I'm a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> this guy said a, a crying woman, not hysterical, but upset, will give me a rager, and I've never known why. Ooh, that's weird, man. That is weird. That's weird stuff. Like that to me is like get in the pit. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, you're not having the best time. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> I wish Buffalo Bill would have said that. Oh. <laughs> you're not having the best time. <laughs> yeah. You're crying, huh? <laughs> uh, yikes. Yeah, that's weird. No, that's not a good one. No. But the movie Dune, that's going to turn some people on because remember that guy like licks that chick's tear or whatever, oh, yeah. takes her tear, yeah, puts it in his mouth. The water is uh, secret. All right. Uh, someone said I used to specialize in dulcet fetish content. I would shove vegetables in myself, oil myself up, and get video and pictures in front of my oven. That content is surprisingly popular. Mostly I did carrots. You can find it on Reddit if you want to see. They you want you to be like right a now? turkey? Hmm. I only get off if a lady <laughs> stuffs vegetables inside herself. Thanksgiving. Turkey. I made stuffing today <laughs> in myself. <laughs> right. We're going to make Dave try it. No, no. no. Don't ruin that stuffing. Would ruin it for him. <laughs> Did you guys like the stuffing? Stop it. Oh, no. I made it myself. Stop it. <laughs> I made it myself. In myself. In myself. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I don't. Jeez, this has gone down a road that. Damn. Wow. That's so crazy. like this is more about like should I start doing this because I think it's going to be a success. Like I'm trying to find a niche. Yeah. Should I oil myself up and shove my... Oh, there's a picture oh, down there. There's oh, a Thanksgiving thing. No, yeah. please don't. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Oh, thank no, you. No, no. Oh, okay, this, next this one. one. <laughs> the next one you can tell. Oh, my goodness gracious. What is that? It is... No, we're not going to look at this one. Look at the title. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> You gotta look no. at it, that. It's definitely just a hot dog bun. <laughs> I'm finally becoming meat, but I have some concerns. See? Oh, look at this, man. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll just hear, like, whoa, humans! Yeah. Whoa! That's it. Again, this is where they live. Oh, no. Look See, at where that. Don't put that <laughs> carrot there. You know what's so going on. This there. sub <laughs> is more about, like, the fantasizing about it rather than people actually doing, doing it. the content. Yep. Hmm. hmm. I am low grade meat. That's what the they have like grades of meat. There's a lot of this on there. Most of us are rump roast, aren't we? <laughs> I'm not a fillet. I can chuck roast. Oh, I'm like one of those pigs with the apple in its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some some buddy who is a bodybuilder is only attracted to women who are just absolutely jacked. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of that. The one other fetish I didn't get to yet that this specialist says are the weirdest he's ever encountered. Salarophilia. Getting down and dirty is their main goal. They're aroused by the sight of filth and dirty partners. I think we watched a porn like that one time that people were covered in dirt and mud. There's like those those people that like want dirty feet, stuff like that. Yep. He uh, wrote of one case study, a 58-year-old Australian man who would oh. frequently masturbate in dusty or filthy places. Can you imagine? Uh, you cannot masturbate in the dust. I like it, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in a room by myself. It's a lot of dust in me. It's like a cloud coming right. off of it. Uh, <laughs> I like a lot of basements, you know? <laughs> uh, then <laughs> that switched into partners. But he found it difficult to find like-minded women who are into yeah. filthy sex. So what would he do? He'd be a problem. You'd find like a homeless person? Probably. It's like living on the street. Oh, my God. In the dirt. Um, his fetish not limited strictly to sexual stuff. He was also aroused by shows like Fear Factor, in which contestants are covered in f- stuff for money. You don't think about that 
right? Like as all of us are having like one reaction to it, like we're grossed out. Someone's just got a rager. Yeah. You know, life is weird, man. I should Airbnb out my car to these people. Make oh, you should have. You shouldn't have went. <laughs> these are some of the. This. Uh, oh my! Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> that dulcet fantasy, the shoving veggies in yourself. So it is. See, it's almost like it you're, is you're a, like a turkey. You're it, like oh, it's yeah. the beginning of like a cannibal, cannibalism. Yeah, I mean, ironically, it's this that, is that oh my yeah. Whoa, turkey's done. She's built like she doesn't get a lot of vegetables any other way. So. <laughs> 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 it's crazy to put one of those turkey turkey timers in you. <laughs> mm. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is oh, a weird ass. See that? Look at Honestly, that. that's almost this is like the beginning that's like cannibalism, of like cannibalism, right? So like it's you kind of in that same human vein. Human stuffed like an animal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Is that a jalapeno? No, yes, it no. is. Got to be spicy. It's where? spicy. Whatever it is. Holy smokes! Man, this is why, like when I see stuff like this, I'm like, and you don't think the rich people have an island somewhere where they're doing this? Right. It's crazy. Come on. This lady said, my dude gets aroused when he cries. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hot. Run from him. <laughs> Chucky, all right there? I'm just trying to get hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. That's so gross. That's disturbing, a crying man with a boner. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd be scared. I'm so, I'm already off put about the crying man part. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think, because I have such a a reaction to seeing a woman cry, where I want to be, I have the opposite reaction when I see a man cry. You don't want to see another weak. man cry? I don't, as I, uh, uh, you know. Mm. No. My buddy gets turned on when women have to go to the bathroom but can't. Like they're in public and they can't find a place to go pee. But it then, is his biggest turn on. Yeah, but then we all know he eventually wants to see them pee their pants. Mm. That's how that goes. It's the I'm fighting it, I'm fighting it, I'm fighting it. I can't fight it anymore. I peed my pants. If you don't think that your buddy wants people to pee themselves... Yeah. You're wrong. This lady said, my boyfriend doesn't necessarily have that aproctophilia, the fart one. But one time when I was riding. Oh, my God. And I needed to fart so bad. He said, just let it go. Do it. <laughs> well, I farted a real good one and he got. And then. You finished? Oh, my God. God. Oh my God. That's one of the ho most horrible moments I've ever heard. <laughs> my God. <laughs> sure, the most horrible person. things you heard on this show. Yeah, it was so graphic and vivid. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I left words out. Yeah. A woman riding you, and then you're like, let it rip. <laughs> and she farts, and you become engorged. Yeah, and you're like, ah! <laughs> Super boner, and then finish within seconds. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> what? Oh, I just I don't even know. Oh, you just took a breath. I thought yep. you were about to say something. Just you normally take a breath like we're that when you're speechless, Dave. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I didn't write it. I'm well, just passing it along. You read it. Once again, I don't think I think they mentioned some of the weirdest stuff, but there's a lot of weird stuff that they skated away from. But this yeah, is like that you know an is expert. There. I know, but he didn't mention any of the real weird, gross, illegal stuff, which is good. That's good. well, cannibal. That's good. Well, yeah. I do think it's that funny one. that that army hammer was a cannibal and he sells timeshares now. Oh, that poor bastard. Yeah, but you know the cannibal actor? Oh, yeah. Get a great deal on a, a timeshare. Hey, don't buy those. I heard another commercial saying it'll ruin your whole life. Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, you bought one? I, I trusted him even though he was a cannibal. Guy was looking at you weird <laughs> yeah, like he, he was. was hungry. Yeah. Come hand on me vegetables. <laughs> Put this in your mouth. <laughs> this lady said I was with a real weirdo. Mm-hmm. Who was into putting random objects in me? He was way more into that than actual sex with me. Yep. The weirdest object probably was a seven iron. What? Good Lord. Why that one? <laughs> hmm. I don't know. <laughs> but the, His favorite club. <laughs> which end went in? I think you try both. The one's way way too easy because they're all the same. The one's way too easy. Pretty much at one so end. like. It just must be so nerve wracking the iron. for ladies and new new relationships. You don't know what's gonna happen. Like what this guy? I'm into just banging on the side of a volcano. Like yeah, I know. Like, 
Oh, there's but another one like, with that same fetish. Which one? With a guy that used to make me drink tons of water, then wouldn't let me pee. He loved to watch me squirm. And then he'd tell me where and how to pee, either in my pants or in public somewhere. What'd I tell you? Yeah. It's just things that single dudes hate to hear, probably. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Because like, <laughs> right, because that guy. All of those people are with somebody. <laughs> right. And like, it's like. Nope, just still single. Yeah. Just still just a single. Normal guy, single. Just a normal guy, not cool enough. <laughs> you know, not bringing enough to the table. Stop. <laughs> Drink all this water and then the men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't pee until I tell you. It's like two hours. You got to wait. Like, it's, it's weird. I'm squirming around. <laughs> yeah. And it's dangerous, too. This guy said, thankfully, I have broken the habit, but I was in a real dark place and I used to jack off in porta potties. Hmm. How do you kick that? I don't know. I mean, you have to just that should fix itself. face them for what they are. Maybe you got to touch the blue every once no, in a while. No, don't touch no. the blue. I, I mean, I don't know how you shake it. I don't know how you shake it. That's the that's his biography. Yeah, touch the blue. Touch, touch the blue. The blue. <laughs> and that was when I knew I had to touch the blue. <laughs> They're like a Gloria Estefan song would play or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. coming touch out of the, the dark. <laughs> Oh, that is, honestly, I could not think, is there a grosser place to pleasure yourself than a porta potty Very few. No, yeah. and I bet they want a challenging one. You know what I mean? Like the one you threw up in. Oh, yeah. Like they want a sweaty, hot one. Probably Full. do. Full. Um, this guy <sighs> said, um, I am turned on by women in hospital beds hooked up to tubes and ventilators. I know it's odd. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah no making you feel comfortable you. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's odd. odd. <laughs> That's because like, I, like, I got a text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're never going to believe this. <laughs> well, the medical stuff is big, though. All that medical stuff. Yeah, there's, it is, uh, you know. Because that's why people buy that stuff. Mm-hmm. For weird fetishy. Yep. Like why else do they need one of those beds where you can put your legs in stirrups and stuff? You know why. I uh, once stuck my toe into my girl's bits <laughs> while she laid in the tub, and it has definitely become an obsession. <sighs> Whoa. That sucks for her, man. Yeah. That sucks for her. Just checks, man. They got it rough, dude. They do. She's just but trying she's to still take with them, you know? She's still with them. <laughs> I can imagine you. you hey, can bath. I just come in just... Yeah. <laughs> I can get dumped for almost nothing. Uh-huh. Not yet, uh, yeah. You know, I'm not putting my toes in anybody. <laughs> you know, it's not my thing, so. That's true. Can't I, find anybody, you know, I won't do it. I can get dumped so fast. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many reasons to dump me. Yeah. These people are out here. Yeah, yeah they are. Killing it. They are. Somehow. Hmm. Nuts. Having a bath, aren't we? <laughs> you know what time it is. <laughs> Let me get these. Uh, it's toe this. time. Let me get yeah. these feet out. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-huh. no. That's no yeah. good. All right, well, here's something to worry about that I probably told you about many times. Leprechauns. Yeah. What were they? There are tons of people with tons of theories on what or who will lead to the eventual end of the world. For some... It'll be some crazy dictator. For others, it'll be a climate disaster. But for Johnny Turnip, it's leprechauns. His last name's Turnip. (laughs) That sucks. He calls them our true enemy. He said leprechauns have been using world leaders and royalty as puppets for their own diabolical schemes for generations. Schemes. Schemes. The Irishman says... He even sees their grubby little sausage fingers all over the recent election. Oh, he yeah. said, I told you guys, <laughs> leprechauns, man. Neither candidate was aware they were being used by these corrupt, gold hungry, shamrock obsessed, stovepipe wearing, alcoholic little pygmies. <laughs> uh huh. He and right. his friends have been working to save the world from the inevitable leprechaun apocalypse. So consider wow. yourself warned. A couple of things. Yep. Uh, one. Mm-hmm. Netflix. Let's do Johnny Turnip Leprechaun Hunter. Oh my God, please. <laughs> I'll write the thing. Please hit me up. Huge we'll hit. This. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> holy yeah. smokes. Nobody's done that. No. Nope. nope. No. And like, what if at the end that is, they're like, ha ha, it was us the whole time. <laughs> and you're like, Leprechaun's 
no! Johnny yeah. Turnip was right. We're taking it all back. Yeah, that's so funny. You're like going, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to meet the higher ups at Netflix mm-hmm. uh, about this Johnny Turnip idea. And then you walk in and it's actual leprechauns. And I'm like, no! Yeah. They're like, you son of a bitch. They're like, oh, we're not going to let you tell our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Get him. You can't have our gold. <laughs> And then it's like Leprechaun the movie. Yeah. It would be crazy to get abducted and then you just see the shadows of their hats. And you're like, oh. You see those buckles, right. the little buckle hats. <laughs> no, no, no. I tell you, have some Irish uncles that probably have oh, I'm sure. true fears. I yeah. They oh, do. yeah. Of leprechauns. Yeah. Because they probably got so. Blitz some nights that they actually did see, see them, some. You know, it's probably just little people. <laughs> that's what it yeah. was. That's what happened to me. Yeah. Who knows? Uh-huh. I don't know. It's uh-huh. there's definite little people fears in my head. It's true. They're all yeah. true. Right. It's probably just that. been passed yeah, you're down. Not really, yeah. you're not afraid of little people. You're afraid of leprechauns. Yeah, that's probably that's it. what it boils Listen, down to. If a real life leprechaun showed up here, I think Dave would be pretty terrified. Well, of course I would. Yeah, you wouldn't. Well, I mean, I don't know. He's fronting like he's going to be all tough in front of a little killer leprechaun. I'm the closest thing to it. <laughs> that's true, you little ginger. <laughs> that's why he's a little dainty, dainty wee ginger. ginger. Oh. He sees me as a leprechaun. Yeah. Hey. It's funny. Hey, Dave. Has he ever asked you where your gold is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, see. Pretty often. I knew it. Pot of gold. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, bastard. All right, coming up in Tales from the Kremlin, what did a prankster trick Russian teachers into doing? Let's get to that. Tales from the Kremlin. In Russia, a prankster wanted to show teachers how deeply they'd fallen into the government's propaganda machine. So to do so, trickster Vladislav Bokin was able to convince the teachers it was in their best interests to wear tinfoil hats in the classroom to protect them and their students from radiation from satellites. You know what's happening. Matt. Satellite radiation. Oh my God! How can I protect myself? Our Lord Putin <laughs> wants us to put on these hats. Well, we're doing it. All right. Good enough. You don't want your name out there like this. Yeah, this no. guy is a real brave person. Because I feel like he is gonna. Because I think travel that- to a. Very high building. Teachers one. are like, of course yeah. we do that program. Yes, whatever he <laughs> wants, we put the little flag on it. We love it. And they did, you guys. I can't well, believe they did they it. They did it, of did. course they oh, did. Oh, that's so embarrassing now, huh? As part of the whatever prank. whatever they say. They were told this was Aww. a large-scale patriotic event, and the tinfoil hats were a must to protect their minds from the transmission of Western ideas. Oh, boy. Yep. See that? It worked. Or they were, he was like, put these hats on for a funny picture, and I'd tell people the craziest thing you ever heard. If you don't think these hats are going to spread like wildfire... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, like, I'm getting in the we'll business right it. now of selling these yeah. hats. Oh. You ain't going to believe it, but the satellites are sending oh. down Russian radiation. Whoa. Yeah, that's the future They're right there. They're spreading the woke mind virus. <laughs> Look at these hats. And if you don't think they're taking off, <laughs> they're taking off. And so many of these teachers fell for it. Yeah. They did. I can't believe how many. Yeah. So he didn't just do it in his own place. He did this nationwide. Yes. Oh actually to God. make all these hats. After putting on the hats, the teachers reported feeling a purification of thoughts. Yeah, I bet. A boost in spirits and a oh. surge in patriotism. Yeah, that's what happens. That's why I'm going to sell all these. Mm. Look how dumb these ladies look, though. I don't think they look dumb. I think they look patriotic. Right? (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yep. Oh, no. She looks like she's got one of those popcorn tins, those old school uh, popcorn pop. Jiffy pop. Jiffy pop pop. on top of her head. Jiffy pop. Yeah, she's got a good one. (laughs) She's really protecting herself. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you're right. That prankster. Yeah, he's... There he is. That's there. him. So he's, he's done. He's dead. done, right? Yeah. I mean, this is too much. Can't One school, you would have been fine, but to embarrass the Russia country. that much? Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Thanks for checking out the Dave and Chuck the Freak Tasty Bits podcast. If you want to hear the entire Dave and Chuck the Freak show from today, subscribe and download the podcast now from the Apple Podcast app or the Google Play Store.